everyone. Uh, sorry I don't have for you a, a beautiful PowerPoint presentation uh, like Tim had, but um, as Nancy said, I did prepare just kind of a short, um, almost bullet point um, outline that's included in the folder that you have. Um, that'll just be a quick, easy reference guide for you to um, you know, look at now as I go through the presentation and also for you to take home so that if you have follow-up questions or you want to do any of your own um, research, it's so easy once you have the substantive statutes that I'm going to talk about and some of the laws to be able to just on your own put it into Google and there's tons of resources out there, some of which I'll talk about through the presentation um, just for your use um, as we go through. Um, so my portion of the presentation is just going to be geared toward uh, the different leaves that are available for um, serious health conditions or family members who um, have a, a member of their family that is experiencing a medical condition and that they may need um, a leave from their, their job to care for them. So the first statute that I'll discuss is the Federal Family Medical Leave Act, and that act is commonly referred to as the FMLA. Basically what the FMLA provides is it's providing unpaid leave um, and job protection while you're out on that leave. And this is an act that covers both um, the employee that has their own medical, con medical condition, but it also applies um, in the context of if you have a family member that you need to care for. As I first kind of go through this, um, just the bullet points for the FMLA, I'm going to speak in the context of an employee needing to take leave for their own serious health condition, and then I'll kind of segue after we kind of go through the specific um, eligibility requirements and things of that nature and kind of link in if you are needing to take leave to care for someone else. So to start off with, there are some eligibility requirements that you have to meet in order to be eligible for FMLA leave. And these um, specific points that you, your employer needs to um, fulfill in order for you to be eligible is that the employer needs to have 50 or more employees within a 75 mile radius of the work site. Uh, or in the context of a public agency, then there would be no um, threshold of the number of employees anyone would be entitled to to take the leave there there's no requirement that you have to have 50 or more in the context of a public agency so we have the 50 or more requirement and then in addition to that you must have also worked for the employer for at least 12 months in addition to this you also have to have worked for 1250 hours within that last 12 month period so there are kind of the three main criteria that you have to satisfy to be eligible. And again, I didn't tell you this, but feel free, if there's anything that you have a question about as we're going along, um, please jump in and interrupt and I'll be happy. Sure. Could you just pull that mic a little closer? Oh, sure. Better? Yes. Yeah. Thank okay. You so much. Thank you. So an example of someone who would be ineligible, it's um, pretty straightforward, but if you worked in a business that had fewer than 50 employees or, for example, if you're a part-time worker, um, and that you have less than the 1,250 hours put in, you would not be eligible um, for FMLA leave. So once you determine that initial eligibility, um, the FMLA would provide leave for a 12, 12 work weeks of leave in a 12 month period for an employee that has a serious health condition that would make the employee unable to perform the essential functions of the job. This definition of serious medical condition is very, very liberal. Uh, I'll read you the, the definition and then I'll just give some examples about what would qualify. Uh, the way that it's defined in the regulations that support the statute are that it's an illness, injury, impairment, or any physical or mental condition that requires inpatient medical care or continuing treatment by a healthcare provider. So just by the very nature of that definition, you could see how a lot of things would qualify as a serious health condition under that definition. Um, some specific examples of things that would qualify, any period of incapacity or treatment connected with any kind of inpatient care that you may need. Um, any period of, of incapacity that would require an absence of more than three calendar days from work would put you under that definition. A period of incapacity due to a chronic serious health condition, 
things like asthma, diabetes, certainly in this context where we're talking brain tumors or related conditions, it's going to satisfy the definition here because it's a very, very liberal standard. <coughs> And the, the leave that you're taking, you will be entitled to 12, 12 weeks of leave. It can be taken consecutively. So if you needed a surgery um, and it would require you to be out for that entire 12 week period, you can take the leave in a chunk of the 12 work weeks. Uh, or the leave could be intermittent. It could also be on a reduced leave schedule, which if you just you know, need to leave work every day at a certain time um, in the afternoons. It can also be accommodated and calculated in that way. So if you're you know, getting chemo or radiation treatments and you're doing that you know, every week or so, you can accommodate that type of leave schedule within the 12 work weeks. It could also be a combination of both. So if you needed a surgery and you were out for four weeks and then there's a gap in time and then you need to follow that up with radiation or chemo, the leave can then change. It does not have to continue. It does not have to be one or the other. It can be a combination of both. <coughs>